What's up guys, my name is Irina and welcome back to my channel where I review everything tech. In today's video, I want to talk about this thing. This is the iPad Pro from 2017, so yes, I've skipped the 2018 iPad Pro as well as the new iPad Pro that has been released this year, so I decided to stick with my iPad Pro for a little bit longer and in this video, I want to show you why. So. This is the 10.5 inch version in a space gray color. I find the size perfect for my needs. It's not too bulky and it's not too small. I have to admit the design of this iPad has begun to look slightly outdated to me with this touch ID button and these really thick top and bottom bezels, especially when compared to the latest generation iPad Pros. But this is definitely not an issue. By the way, as you can see, I have a screen protector on my iPad, which turned out to be pretty good. I've had it on for about two years now and it still looks good. I'll put the links to all the accessories I have for my iPad Pro in the description. When it comes to the display of this iPad, we have pretty much the same LED backlit LCD display just like the one on the latest iPad Pro models. Same pixel density, same 600 nits max brightness, true tone, promotion technology with 120 Hz refresh rate, which by the way still feels amazing, especially when I use this iPad to draw in apps like Procreate. It really feels instant, it's like you're drawing on the paper. I remember I made a video comparing this 2017 iPad Pro to the 2018 iPad, which didn't have the promotion technology, and I was really impressed by the difference. As you can see, the delay is quite insignificant when it comes to 120Hz display. My 2017 iPad Pro also has anti-reflective coating, which is advertised in the newly released iPad Pro. This feature is really helpful, it reduces the ambient light reflections and glares. Of course, it doesn't eliminate it 100%, but here is the difference between the iPad without anti-reflective coating and my iPad Pro that has it. I think the difference is pretty noticeable. So lately, I've been using the Procreate a lot. This app is absolutely amazing. I have recommend it especially if you're into drawing but I would say this app is also very calming and relaxing even if you can't draw at all and you just love to doodle. Sometimes for me it's like a therapy. This iPad Pro is compatible with the first generation Apple Pencil which is glossy and round like this one. Keep in mind that the second generation Apple Pencil will not work with this iPad Pro. And when it comes to how useful this pencil is, I would say I use it quite often, not only for drawing, but also for editing photos and videos. I also love to use it when I play some games like buttons and scissors. By the way, it's so addictive. And of course, it's needless to say how important it is to have the Apple Pencil if you're a student and you take notes on your iPad. When it comes to accessories, I got this bundle for my Apple Pencil. I got mine in a mint green color, but there are plenty of other color options. So here you get a cap holder so you don't lose the cap, a protective nib cover, and a charging tether, so you don't have to stick your Apple Pencil into your iPad for charging. If you have the first generation Apple Pencil, I think you'll agree that this is such a weird way of charging. I'm always afraid it'll just accidentally turn my iPad over and break everything. So yeah, this thing is a game changer. When it comes to photo editing on the iPad, mostly I use QuickShot. If you've been subscribed to my channel for a while, you probably already know that I love this app. Photo editing is so much easier on the iPad than on the smartphone because the whole editing process can be so much more precise and you can see all the details. And when it comes to other photo editing apps on the iPad, I also like to use Snapseed. And speaking of the video editing, I've never considered this device as my working daily driver where I would edit all of my videos, but this is absolutely doable on this 2017 iPad Pro. Sometimes I make some fun videos in iMovie on this iPad and it's very easy to do. And when it comes to more complex and detailed video editing, I think the LumaFusion app has been one of the most popular ones. Yes, the latest generation iPad Pro has the advantage of having the USB-C connector, which makes the process of transferring video files to the iPad so much easier. With the lightning connector on this iPad Pro, it could be quite a hassle, but on the bright side, it doesn't feel like this iPad got any slower, it still feels fast and zippy, like it was on the first day I got it. And by the way, this iPad shoots 4K videos at 30 frames per second, so if someday this iPad was the only device I had, meaning no computers and no cameras, 
I think I'd still manage to make a video just with this iPad, but of course the overall production quality would probably not be the best. Speaking of the camera, we have a 12 megapixel rear camera with an aperture of 1.8 and we get a 7 megapixel front camera with an aperture of 2.2. There is no ultra wide camera here, but honestly, taking into account that I almost never take photos with my iPad, I don't feel like I'm missing out here. I was a little surprised to find out that the latest iPad Pros don't have the optical image stabilization on their cameras, while the older iPad models do have it. It actually looks like a downgrade in some way, but anyway, I think the photography isn't really a top priority for most iPad users. Overall, I have to admit, this iPad takes pretty good shots, and by the way, I was curious how good the camera is on this iPad when compared to my iPhone 11 Pro Max. I think I like the photos from the 11 Pro Max better, but overall the shots from the iPad also look pretty good. When it comes to playing games on this iPad, I have my favorites here. As I previously mentioned, one of them is Buttons and Scissors. It's a logic game and it's really addictive. Usually I'm not a fan of these type of games, but I really love this one. Then I have Subway Surf here. I think this game is actually pretty old. I clearly remember how I tried to play it for the first time in 2012. Yeah, time flies. When it comes to more demanding games like Asphalt, this is absolutely not a problem for this iPad Pro. The whole gaming experience is seamless, no lag, no crashes. When it comes to speakers, we have four speakers here, two on top and two at the bottom. These speakers are quite loud and I don't have any problems watching YouTube or Netflix on this iPad, but the good thing is that you can always connect an external speaker to your iPad if you feel that it's not enough for you for some reason. By the way, this thing has a 3.5mm headphone jack on top here, which is such a rare thing to see these days. Now let's talk about the battery life. With moderate use, this iPad usually lasts me about two days. If I go harder on it, I get about five and a half hours of screen on time. Sometimes it feels to me that the battery life on this iPad used to be better when I just got it, but as you know, the battery deterioration is expected over time, so it's not a big deal, I would say it's normal. When it comes to charging, lately I've been using this 18 watt power adapter that I got with my iPhone 11 Pro Max. And speaking of the charging time, let's see. 30 minutes of charging gives us 26%. In about one hour, as you can see, we get 55%. And finally, it takes about two hours and 30 minutes to fully charge my iPad Pro. So, in the latest iPad Pro models, you get some improvements and new features like lighter sensor for improved augmented reality experience, new faster chipset, ultra-wide camera, improved microphone quality and other features, but having said that, I realize that all of these improvements are still not compelling enough for me to upgrade. Guys, don't get me wrong, I'm always super excited about new tech, but at this point, I feel like my 2017 iPad Pro works just fine for my needs, so I think I'll just wait for the next iPad Pro to come out. Let me know in the comments if you use a tablet in your daily life, and if so, which model? Thank you so much for watching this video, and see you in the next one!